Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been like a long time no see situation. Um, just a little update for you. My husband had been gone from me for like six months on a work related trip and he got back a couple of weeks ago. He got back the same week that I put up my Urban Decay Vice lipstick video. I'll link it right here in case you're interested. Um, he got back a couple days later and then I've just been enjoying living my life and spending time with him and we have a lot of things going on in the very near future that we're trying to get prepared for so that's kind of where I've been but I'm back now and I have missed you terribly so today's video is going to be a continuation of my eyeshadow 101 series if you're not familiar with it I will link my brush video and I will also link my cat eye video there are two different um, types of smoky eyes and I'm trying to give you guys detailed tutorials over the first one was a traditional cat eye smoky eye, which by my definition is a smoky eye that creates a gradient effect that starts lightest in the inner corner of your eye and it gets darker going towards the outer corner of your eye, which kind of gives like an elongated open eyed appearance. And this particular look that we're doing today is a traditional full blown balls to the wall smoky eye where the saturation of color starts at your lash line and gets lighter as it goes up. It's a very, um, I don't know, like a Pamela Anderson bombshell type of smoky eye, which is really dark, really sexy. I was talking about the traditional cat eye smoky eye video. I told you guys that the colors I use and the brands I use and the brushes I use are all completely interchangeable. Adjust this for you, your taste, and what you have. Nine times out of ten, when you guys are watching a YouTube tutorial, what you're actually learning is color combinations. They're not so much teaching you about placement because the placement of the shadow is everything. Literally everything. <laughs> not the way that people call highlighters everything. <laughs> so I have hooded um, smaller eyes and I have a good bit of lid space but my eyeballs themselves are pretty small. If you take a look, you'll see what I mean. So somebody asked me if I think that as far as hooded eyes are concerned, which eye look flatters them the most. I say you can make any eye look work for you as long as you are placing the colors where you want to put them. This is how I do it. This is the look that I like to go for. For me, pretty much any eye look I create is with the objective of making my eyes look bigger and more round and more open. But I understand not everybody wants that. You can tailor this however you see fit. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. I have already applied my foundation, my eyebrows. I always do, that's the first thing I do. It's why they're always on when I do videos. If you guys want a brow tutorial, please let me know. I have a really, really old one and it's terrible. And my brows have definitely gone through an evolution and I think they're in a good place now. If you wanna know how to do them like this, let me know. I have also primed and applied concealer underneath my brow bone. If you have questions about why I do that or how I do that or what products I prefer for that, um, check my cat eye video it answers all that for you the only thing I haven't done yet that I have been telling you guys is a really really helpful part in the blending process is to set my primer with some sort of powder I told you guys in my last video you can use a translucent shadow you can use a eyeshadow that is similar to the color of your skin tone um, if not maybe just a little bit lighter would be even better use what you have don't worry so much about you know the little details because it's not that important. So today I'm actually just gonna use my RCMA no color powder to ooh, <laughs> to set my under eye area. And I'm gonna use this fluffy brush from Royal and Langnickel. I have rubbed the um, numbers off, tap tap, in case you're wondering what that's about. Check my cat eye video. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try to leave out some of the little kind of um, fun facts and tidbits that I've already included. So. One thing I did talk about in my last video is to always tap your brush off before you put it on your eye because that's how you're going to avoid going in with too much. Once you put on something, it's a lot harder to take it off than it is just to build it slowly and add more, if you know what I am saying. I also told you guys in the last video that I was going to try to use the same eyeshadows in both of the videos just to kind of give you an idea of how versatile your shadows actually are in fact instead of feeling like you need to go buy a whole bunch of shadows every time you see a youtuber put on a new video use what you have understand as great as youtube is and as much as i love it and as much as i've learned from it 
just like all media that we consume, advertising is a big part of it. I'm not trying to say like sweeping declaration, everyone on YouTube is trying to sell you something. I'm just saying like, you don't need as much shit as you probably think that you do to create a good makeup look. Learn how to use your tools, learn your placement, learn color theory, and you could get a lot done with a lot less stuff. There's no need to become a full blown product junkie in order to produce a good makeup look. The ultimate deciding factor of how good your makeup looks is you and your talent and your dedication and your ability. It has nothing to do with a $40 eyeshadow. So use what you have. So I'm going to start off with Makeup Geek's Peach Smoothie. This is going to act as my transition color, not my crease color. I'm going to talk to you once again as if you've seen my other videos. So I'm going to say brush one, color one, brush two, color two. Please watch the other videos if you're completely lost in the sauce and have no idea what I'm talking about. The brush one in this case was the Royal and Langnick one because it was the biggest one and it went in with my lightest color. So now I'm going to move on to color two and brush two and brush two is going to be a Sigma E40. I think it was the same brush two in the other video. You'll probably notice that not only are the colors the same that I use in this video, but the brushes that I use are basically the same as well. And that's true for any video you watch of mine. Literally, it's probably always going to be the same types of brushes. So use what you got. Once again. Brush one is a Sigma E40 and color one is Peach Smoothie by Makeup Geek. And we're just going to take this all the way in our crease from inner corner to outer corner. Now, one thing we are going to do, especially if you had hooded eyes, this is something particularly helpful as far as I'm concerned. Sometimes when you take your colors on a traditional smoky eye and you kind of do this number with them, like you're just kind of rounding out the shape, you can easily sink your eyes in a little bit. But if you just take this almost like in a rectangle motion, I know that sounds really weird, but you'll see what I mean as, it, as I go on. You kind of want to create like an upward shape like this because this dark color if you're going like this with your eyeshadow going round once we get to this dark part it's going to go do the same thing and it's just going to kind of i can't explain it i've just recently discovered that when i do it the uh, more round way i create a very panda-ish squinty look on myself but when i almost kind of create like a rectangle or excuse me when i almost create like an angle right here it gives me more space to work with does that make sense? Okay, like I said, you peach smoothie all over. With this color, because it is our lightest color, you don't want to bring it down too far because you do have more colors that you need to bring in that are going to give you a great effect. So resist the urge to do this guy with it. Try to keep it up. And you're just going to do that on both eyes. You can build this up as much as you want. I'm going to build it up probably a little more than I would normally because I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. Can you see that my... Let me zoom in a little bit. So I'm not sure if you can tell. But like here's my crease all right here. This is where my bone is. This color is going right above that. This, your crease... This color is going to be a little bit darker. So, like I said, take it a little bit higher than um, you probably think you need to. Does that make sense? You guys always hear me talking about keeping your colors low. I am pretty much exclusively talking about your dark colors. Your light ones you can go pretty high with. Now that's done. We're going to go in with brush two and color number two, and I'm just going to go in with a brush that's really similar to my E40 that I just used, but it is a little bit more narrow than the E40. The reason being, I am going in with a darker color, and the darker color is going to encompass a smaller area of my eye, so I don't want to go in with a brush that's this size, the dark color is just going to cover up what I've already done, and you're trying to create a gradient effect. So. Going in with this brush, it's very similar to the Sigma one. It's just a little bit more tapered. And I'm gonna go in with a darker color. And in this case, it is Saddle from MAC. Sweeping declaration. I'm trying to get out of using MAC altogether on my channel because of their animal testing practices. So I'm not suggesting this to you because I wanna support you going out and buying it. It's just what I have. It's what I used in the last video. I said that I would 
um, use the same colors. And from here on out, I will not be replacing MAC products with more MAC products. I will be finding more ethical or um, animal friendly ones to use in the future, but this is what I have now, so I'm gonna use it. And taking that smaller colored brush on a smaller area, there's a mirror sitting right here just off camera, and I'm using that to look down into it. That helps a lot if you can see the full spectrum of your eye that way. You get a hand mirror, do what you gotta do. Looking down into it, tap, tap. I'm gonna go even lower with that shadow. And I'm gonna place this directly on my crease this time, and I'm still gonna keep, still gonna keep that kind of, I don't even know what to describe this. Like a, just a, like a little angle on the inner corner so I'm not closing myself off too much. And you can build this up once again as dark or as light as you would like to. Once again, a little bit lower in that crease, keeping my pressure on my brush light. So I'm holding it at the very end of the handle, looking down into a mirror. And typically what I do after I apply color, I will go in with my, um, I'll go with my biggest brush or my second biggest brush in this case. This is the E40 I was telling you about. And I will use that to just soften up and blend the two colors together. I haven't done my makeup in so long. You guys ever do that? Like go a couple of, like a hot minute. Honestly, I think it's been like a week and a half since I've done my makeup full blown. Sometimes I can get away with that, believe it or not. So in case some of you guys are OG watchers or viewers and you're like, why are you talking about this ethical animal crap? Um, I did tell you guys in a video recently that I've gone vegan. Um, tomorrow marks my four month anniversary being vegan. Best decision I ever made in my entire life. I can't even tell you. I do want to make a video about it and I plan on doing that in a couple of days. So I do plan on making a video about it this week. I'm really, really excited about it. Um, I did not tap that off enough. Um, you guys have heard me say that I want to make other content outside of makeup videos. I will not stop making videos that are about makeup. It is a huge part of my life and a huge way that I express myself, but I just, I, I just, I don't know. I have other shit to say, you know what I mean? Now I'm seeing. Yes, to answer your question, I am going in a third time. I want this to be really smoky. So like I haven't done my makeup in so long, so I'm just gonna pile it on today. Let's just do it to it. Honestly, I think what I'm doing right now is the exact same smoky eye that's in my like brown fall smoky eye makeup tutorial. I'll link it right here. I think the color combinations might be pretty much exactly the same. So we're going on to brush number four and color number four. And for color number four, I'm going to use Brown Down from MAC, which is what I used in my last video, like I said, so I'm gonna use it again. And I'm gonna take this on an even smaller brush than the one I just used. I'm gonna take it even lower than I did the last one. Now, coming right here, be mindful. You do wanna keep the inner corner of your eye with this color um, up. Don't bring it down too far yet. Once we bring this dark lid color into the equation, um, that's when you can focus on bringing your colors down. But for right now, we wanna keep it lifted to give this dark color something to blend up into. Make sense? You feel me, dog. Want to, because I'm gonna connect my bottom lash line with my top, I'm actually winging this out ever so slightly because the shape that my bottom lash line is going to create is going to kind of go upwards at an angle. If I bring this down like this, it's going to round it out, which you can absolutely do. Um, that's just not what I prefer. But if you want to create more of a lifted effect on the outer corner, try to kind of go at another angle as opposed to rounding it. You know what I'm saying? It's all preference. 
gonna take the bigger brush that I applied the saddle with and I'm going to blend the brown down in the saddle together so that it's not a harsh separation of shades. Personal for the big trick, okay? Every time I do a smoky eye like this where I need the lid to be dark and pigmented and fade up, and I can't think of any exceptions to this, I always put down a paint pot on top of my lid. These are my paint pots. I depotted them a long time ago. I just do not have a lot of room in here to keep a bunch of crap. So I try to condense things. This is a Vuset. Vuset? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, right. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it actually keeps your paint pots moist. Moist. It keeps them from drying out, believe it or not. So in this one, I, I couldn't even tell you anymore. <laughs> what these are it's been so long since i put them in there it's been like over a year but i'm just going to take a darker brown paint pot maybelline makes them some eyeliners particularly anything that calls itself a coal um they're usually pretty blendable and pretty creamy you could put that all the lid and blend it out i'm going to use a paint pot use anything you have maybelline makes them get them in a drugstore everybody makes paint pots or some sort of cream shadow is basically what you're looking for this one right here and I'm going to pat this all over my lid with a flat brush. Once you get to the lid, that is flat brush time. Um, as I've said before, you can take a fluffy brush like this and try to pack stuff, pack stuff all over your lid, but it just takes way too much time and it's really messy. So flat brushes on the lid. I'm just gonna take a little bit of this paint pot and I'm going to focus the most of it closest to my lash line as humanly possible. You by no means wanna take this paint pot anywhere near your crease like anywhere near it because we're gonna have to blend the texture of this creamy paint pot into the texture of the powder and if you take that up too high you might be able to see the separation between the two i feel like that doesn't make sense until you see what i'm doing so let's just see if it does once i start the process almost looks like it's the same color now immediately <laughs> no time to waste you want to take the brush that you use to apply that dark brown color and you want to start kind of softening up the edge of the um, cream shadow because if it dries it's difficult to manipulate so you get it before it can dry completely you're almost setting it I guess like setting the edges of it that's what we'll say once again Blend it out, sauerkraut. You guys, I'm so seriously considering making a t-shirt that says that. Blend it out, sauerkraut. Period dot astronaut. In your face, Nancy Grace. Are you guys like that? Do I have any followers who are just little weirdos who like create your own little catchphrases and just wear them out to the point of irritating everyone in your friends and family? I can't be the only one. I'm gonna take the same brown down color that I had all over my crease and I'm gonna pat that all over my lid on top of the paint pot. Now what this does is it takes our crease color and it helps blend it into our lid color. If I just took this brown color and just patted it all over my lid and then somehow tried to move it up into that saddle, it's gonna be a lot harder to blend and the gradient effect's not gonna be there. So I'm gonna pat that all over my lid and you can stop at this point, but I'm gonna add an even darker color even closer to the lash line just to give you another idea about how far you can take it to make it even smokier, even more dramatic and even darker. So once again, going in with that brown down color first. Tap, tap. Pat it all over the old lid. And because we have a base on that lid underneath this color, it's automatically going to help it build up in intensity. It's going to make it look a little bit darker. And a lot of times when you're working with a lot of matte shades, they can get really choppy and difficult to blend. The more product you add, the choppier they get. Something, in my opinion, about adding a paint pot on the lid to help blend it upwards, it just, it's like a game changer. Just try it. Just try it. Let me know how, you, how it works out for you. So I don't know if you guys care, but I have to put it out there. Seosin came out with a new album and Anthony Green's on it. 
Now, if you weren't like an early 2000s emo kid like I was, you probably have no idea who Sayosin or Anthony Green is, unless you're a Circus Survive fan, but Sayosin was a band that was out in the early 2000s. I want to say I discovered them in like 2005, 2006. They broke up. Anthony Green started Circus Survive. Sayosin went on with a different Lynn Singer. I don't even know his name because I'm not really a fan of Sayosin without Anthony Green. But they put out a new album and it's absolutely freaking amazing. I'm going to link it down below. Please listen to it. I'm just spreading the good word. Spreading the good word. Totally turning into a chit chat. Get ready with me video, but whatever. And you probably know what's coming next. We're gonna blend it out. Okay, okay, okay. So now we've done that. And I'm going to take a little bit of a darker shadow. This is NARS Coconut Grove. You guys know it's like probably my single favorite single eyeshadow in the whole wide world. And I'm just going to take a Sigma E54 Medium Sweeper, which you can tell isn't exactly like smaller than the E55, but it's a little bit more narrow. So it's going to be a little bit easier for me to pat it directly on that lid. Once again, use what you have. And since it's darker, it's gonna go lower. I'm basically gonna put this only on my mobile lid, which is like the part that, like right here. I'm not gonna take it up very high at all. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera off and do the rest of my makeup. Excuse me, little mirror. I'm gonna turn the camera off and do the rest of my makeup and I will come back to do my lash line, my bottom lash line, because they're all gonna to connect together. And then honestly, that's it. This particular eye look, the traditional smoky eye, is like the easiest one to do. I'll be right back. All right, all right. So I've done everything else. Now we're gonna do my lash line. Feel free to just stop the video right here, right now, if you are not into that kind of thing. But as I said before, typically with me, the goal of my eye makeup is to just kind of open my open up my eyes a little bit. And as you can tell, we have so much going on up here with the dark shadow and the lashes that I just like to kind of balance it. Obviously everyone's different. And perhaps when you did this look, you didn't add lashes or maybe you didn't add so much depth at the lash line. So you have nothing to balance out. Just use your own judgment and do what flatters you, what makes you happy. That's number one tip in makeup I can give any of you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and take the saddle color that we started off with in my actual crease, not my transition color. I mean, you can just go ahead and go in with the peach smoothie and then the saddle and then all of the colors if you want to. Um, I, I don't think it's necessary in this particular case, so I'm not going to. And I'm just going to take a little bit of that on a small brush. This is a Sigma E32. And I'm just going to run this from my lash line. Um, up to the corner of my eyeshadow here, like kind of connecting it. I understand that I know I look weird right now because I always look weird until I do my lash line. It's like the last thing I do though, isn't that weird? Weird, weird, weird. Think of another adjective, Whitney, come on. Next, on a slightly smaller brush, I'm going to just take this even closer to the lash line. Now, when it comes to your inner corner, you can do whatever you want in terms of how far in you wanna take your darker colors. Lately, I've been into going completely around my eye and even bringing my lid color down into my tear duct because as I said before, my eyes are hooded and smaller. So sometimes when I'm looking dead on at you, you can't really tell what color is on my actual lid itself. Granted, if I got rid of the super long lashes, you probably would be able to tell, but I can't. Lashes are my thing. So once again, just connecting it from inner corner to the outer corner. Easy, right? As we did on the top lash line, we are going to blend out our darker colors with our lighter colors so that they have a gradient and it's not just like a harsh line. Not that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so now we're gonna take an even smaller brush with the even darker color 
And this part, like I said, just like every other part in this video, is optional, but I just, I don't know, like I said, I haven't worn makeup in a hot minute, so I just kind of feel like going hamburgers with it, or, or garden burgers, I should say. Ha <laughs> ha um, where's my little brush? Where's my little brush? We'll use this one. It's the Sigma E65. Just getting up in there. And I am going to take this from inner corner to outer corner, just like I have with the other color. So I'm sorry if this part's a little bit like automated, but I think at this point, if you've seen all my other videos, you guys have this down by now. And if you do have it down, please send me pictures on Instagram, hashtag Whitney Hedrick or at tag me or send me snapchats or whatever because some of you guys have and you've sent me before and afters of what your makeup looked like before you try these techniques and what they look like now and it's just so cool to see the progress that you guys have made and I'm so happy to help. So yeah, anyway, inner corner, outer corner, darkest color. Let's do it. Alright you guys, so that is the end of my smoky eye tutorial. The only things I did off camera that I didn't show you guys in the tutorial was I put some eyeliner in my waterline and put some mascara on my bottom lash line, which optionally you don't have to do it. Um, if you keep the waterline clean, it will make this look a little bit more natural as far as this look can possibly be considered natural. So yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Share it with your friends and your family. If you know anyone who is struggling with their smoky eye skills, share the love. Subscribe if you have not and check the down bar for links to all my social media platforms. I look forward to filming a crap ton of videos for you guys this week. I'm super excited. So as always, if you have requests, let me know and I'll talk to you very soon. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I love you more than you will ever know. Bye.